from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering Activio 2019 Data Driven. Brought to you by Activio. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in on the ground tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, Stu Minimus here. John Furrier is also in the house. We are covering the Actifio Data Driven 19 event. Second year for this uh, conference. It's all about data. It's all about being data driven. Charlie Kwan is here. He's the Director of Data and AI Offering Management at IBM. Charlie, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Happy to be here, thank you. So Actifio has had a long history with IBM. In fact, when the company got started, it had a time to market play. It took a virtualization product and it yep. allowed them to be, be first, really, and then get heavily into the data virtualization. They've since evolved that, but you guys are doing a lot of partnerships together. We're going to get into that. But talk about your role within IBM sure. and you know, what is this data and AI sure. offering management thing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so data and AI is uh, our business unit within the IBM overall corporation. Our focus and our mission is really about helping our customers drive better business outcomes um, through data, leveraging data in the context and in the pursuit of analytics and artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence. So the portion of the business that I'm part of is unified governance and integration. And if you think about data and AI as a whole, uh, you can think about it in the context of the ladder to AI. Um, oftentimes when we talk about data and AI, we talk about the foundational principles and capabilities that are required to help companies and co our customers progress on their journey to AI. And it really is about the information architecture that we help them build. And that information architecture is a, essentially a foundational prerequisite around that journey to AI and, uh, and uh, analytics. And those layers of the ladder to AI um, are collecting the data, making sure you have it easily accessible to the individuals that need it, organizing the data. Uh, that's where the unified governance and integration portfolio comes into play, uh, building trusted, business-ready data, high quality, uh, with governance around that, making sure it's available to be used later. Um, the uh, analyze layer in terms of leveraging the data for analytics and AI, and then infuse across the organization, leveraging those AI models across the organization. So within that context of data and AI, uh, we've partnered with Actifio at the end of 2018. Uh, to so before we get into sure, that, so sure, I, yeah. I have to, uh, sorry to interrupt you, yeah, but, no problem. but Rob Thomas is, and I want to double click on what you just said. Sure. Rob Thomas is, is famous for saying there is no AI without IA. Absolutely, that's meaning right. Meaning no, no artificial intelligence without information architecture. Correct. So, sounds good. You talked about governance. Yep. That's obviously part of it, but, but what does that mean, no AI yeah. without IA? So it's really about the fundamental prerequisites. To be able to have the underlying infrastructure around the data assets that you have. The fundamental tenet is that data is one of your, your, your tremendous assets any enterprise may have. A lot of time and effort has been sp uh, spent investing and man hours invested into collecting the data, uh, making sure it's available, but at the same time, it hasn't been freed up to be able to use for downstream purposes, whether it's operational use cases or analytic use cases. And uh, the information architecture is really about how do you frame your data strategy so that you have that data available to use and to drive business outcomes later. And those business outcomes may be results of insights that are driven out of the, uh, the, um, the data, but they could also be part of the, the data pipeline that goes into feeding things like application development or test data management. And that's one of the areas that we're working with XFIO on. So the information architecture is a framework that you guys Correct. essentially publish and communicate to your clients. That's right. Uh, it, it doesn't require that you have IBM products plugged no. in, but of course you can certainly plug in IBM products. Sure. Uh, if you're smart enough to develop an yeah. in, 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 in information architecture, sure. presumably, and you, got, you show where your products fit, and you're going to sure. sell more stuff, but it's not a sure. prerequisite. I can Correct. use other Correct. tooling if I want to do that. I think that, the framework right? is a good prerequisite. The products themselves, of course, no, right? Yeah. Uh, but the framework is a good foundational you know, construct around how you can think about it so that you can you know, progress along that journey. All right, so yeah. you, you started talking about uh, uh, Actifio, your relationship there, so you've That's created right. the Infosphere Virtual Data Pipeline. Correct. Uh, why did you develop that product, sure. and then we'll get into it. Sure, um, it's all part of our overall unified governance and integration portfolio. Like I said, that's that organized layer of the ladder to AI that I was referring to. And it's all about making sure you have um, clear visibility and knowing what data assets that you have. So we always talk about in terms of know, trust, and use. Know the data assets that you have, make sure you understand the data quality and the classification around that data that you have. Trust the data, um, understand the lineage, understand how it's been touched, how it's been transformed, uh, build a catalog around that data and then use and make sure it's usable to downstream applications or downstream individuals. And uh, the virtual data pipeline offering really helps us in that last category around using and making use of the data, the assets that you have, 
putting it into directly into the hands of the, the users of that data. So whether they be uh, data scientists and data engineers, or application developers and testers. So the virtual data pipeline and the capabilities uh, based on the Actifio Sky virtual uh, appliance uh, really help build that snapshot data, uh, provide the self-service user interface to be able to get it into the hands of application developers and testers, or data engineers and data scientists. And, and why is that important? Yeah. Um, is it because they're actually using the same or, 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 or substantially similar data sets yeah. uh, across their their, their, their work stream, maybe right. you could explain that. Yeah, it's important because the speed at which um, applications are being built, insights are being driven, is requiring that there is a lot more agility and uh, ability to self-service into uh, the data that you need. Um, traditional challenges that we see is, if you think about preparing um, to build an application or preparing to build an AI model, um, building it, deploying it, and managing it, the majority of the time, 80% of the time, is built upfront, preparing the data, uh, talking to IT, trying to figure out what data you need, uh, asking for it, waiting for two weeks to two months to try to get access to that data, getting it and then realizing, oh, I got the wrong data, I need to supplement that, or I need to do another iteration of the model, going back to try to get more data. Uh, and, and that's you know, the area that application developers and data scientists don't necessarily want to be spending their time on. And so we're trying to shrink that time frame. And how do we shrink that is by providing business users or, or line of business users, data scientists, application developers with the individuals that are actually going to be using the data to provide their own access to it, right? To be able to get that snapshot, that point in time access to that point of uh, production data to be able to then infuse it into their development process, their testing process, or the analytic development process as well. Where, where do traditional tooling, mm -hmm. where, does, where does traditional tooling fit in yeah. this sort of new world, because yeah, I remember when Hadoop came out, it was like, oh, the, right. the enterprise data warehouse is dead, and then you ask customers, like, what's one of the most important things that you're doing in your big data pipeline, yeah. and they'd say, oh yeah, we need our EDW. Right. So right. I could now collect more data right. for lower cost, keep it longer, all that stuff, but the traditional EDW yep. was still critical. But sure. what you were just describing, you know, building a cube, you guys yep. own Cognos, obviously, that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest acquisitions that IBM ever made, but it's a critical component. Um, you talk about data quality, integration, yes. those things. It's all a puzzle that you know, fits together in this larger mosaic. Can That's you help right. us understand that a little sure. bit? Sure, and well, one of the fundamental things to understand is you have to know what you have, right? And the data catalog is a critical component of that data strategy. Understanding where your enterprise assets sit, uh, they could be structured information, they may be unstructured information sitting in file repositories or emails, uh, for example. Uh, but understanding what you have, understanding how it's been touched, how it's been used, understanding the requirements and uh, limitations around that data, understanding who are the owners of that data. So building that catalog view of your overall enterprise assets, that's the fundamental starting point from a governance standpoint. And then from there, you can um, allow access to individuals um, to, that, that are interested in understanding and leveraging the data assets that you may have in one uh, pool here. The challenge is data exists across enterprise everywhere, right? There's silos that may uh, have rows um, in one particular department that then gets merged in with another department and then you have uh, two organizations that may not even know what the other individual has. So the, the challenge is to be, try to break down those silos, get clarity of the visibility around what assets you have so that uh, individuals can then leverage that data for whatever uses they may have, whether it be development or testing or uh, analytics. So if I could generalize the problem. Yeah. Too much data. Yep. Not enough value, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll talk about value in terms of things that you guys do that I'm inferring. Risk sure. reduction. Correct. Uh, speed to insights. Um, and then ultimately lowering cost or increasing yeah. revenue. And right. That's kind of what it's all about. Yeah, we, we talk about business outcomes in terms of um, increased revenue, decreased cost, or reduced risk, right? In terms of governance, those are the three things that you want to unlock for your customers. And you don't think about governance and um, creating new revenue streams. You generally don't think about it in terms of reducing costs, but you do think about it oftentimes in terms of reducing your risk profile and compliance. But uh, the ability to actually know your data, build that trust, and then use that data really does open up different opportunities to actually build new applications, new systems of engagement, new systems of record, uh, new applications around analytics and AI that will unlock those um, different ways that we can you know, market to customers, sell to customers, engage our own employees as well. Yeah, so, so. The, the initial entry into the, the organization, the budget, if you will, is yeah. around that risk reduction, right? People can understand yes. that I got all this data and I need to, to, to make sure that I'm managing it according right. to the edicts of my organization. But are Correct. you actually seeing, let me play skeptic, are yeah. you really seeing 
a value beyond that risk reduction. I mean, it's been nirvana yeah. in, in the compliance and governance world is yeah. not just compliance and sure. governance and you know, avoiding fees and, right. and, and getting slapped on the wrist or even something worse, sure. but we can actually through this data quality initiative and integration, sure. et cetera, et cetera, drive other value. You actually Absolutely. seeing that? Yes, we are actually. Um, particularly last year with the whole onslaught of GDPR in the European Union and the right. implications of GDPR here in the US or other parts of the world, um, really was a pervasive topic. Uh, and a lot of what we were talking about was specifically that. Compliance, make sure you stay you know, on the right side of the regulation. But at the same time, investing in that data architecture or information architecture, investing in the governance program actually allowed our customers to understand the different components that are touching the individual, right? Because it's all about individual rights and individual privacy. So understanding what they're buying, understanding what information we're collecting on them, uh, understanding what permissions and consent that we have to leverage their information really allowed our customers to actually uh, to leverage that information and for a different purpose outside of the whole compliance mindset because compliance is a difficult nut to crack. There's requirements around it, but at the same time, uh, there are you know, uh, best effort requirements around that as well. So the, the, the driver for us is not necessarily just about compliance, but it's about what more can you do with that governed data that you already have, because you have to meet those compliance requirements anyway, to be able to flip the script and talk about business value, business impact, revenue, and that type of thing. So now, so you're only about, what, six months in? Correct, this as initiative? part of the partnership, yes. All right, so it's early days, but, but how's it going, and what can we expect going forward? Going great. Uh, we have uh, a, a terrific partner, a partnership with Actifio. Um, the Actifio virtual, or the IBM virtual data pipeline offering is part of our broader portfolio within unified governance, and it fits nicely to build out some of the test data management capabilities that we've already had. Uh, Optum, the portfolio is part of our, um, our capability set, and it's really been focused around test data management, building synthetic data, uh, orchestrating test data management as well. And the virtual data pipeline offering actually is a nice complement to that to build out a pretty robust portfolio now. Great. All right, Charlie, well hey, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. How's the event? It's been, been terrific, it's been terrific. It's, yeah. it's amazing to be surrounded by so many people that are excited about data. Yeah, yeah, you don't get that everywhere. So. Hey, we're always excited about That's data right. on theCUBE. Charlie, thanks Thank so much you. for Thank coming you, on theCUBE. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest, Dave Vellante, John Furrier, and Stu Miniman are in the house. You're watching theCUBE, Actifio, Actifio Data Driven 2019. Be right back.